Hello, McAdors Football Fan TV. This is Tuesday Transfer Talk and it's a chance for you to get your comments in and I'll discuss and react from all the latest in the Irish transfer news. Um, I suppose the one that I didn't react to so far, the one that probably everybody's talking about is the one of Gavin Bazunu moving to Southampton from Manchester City. Um a deal that's obviously beneficial to Shamrock Rovers. It's beneficial to, obviously, Gavin Bazzino and beneficial to Southampton. It makes sense for all parties involved. Um, I'd imagine City have a buyback clause in there somewhere or some way of getting them back to Manchester City at some point if they really, really want to. So, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely terrific move for Gavin Bazunu and for Ireland and as I said for everybody involved really I mean this is our future goalkeeper or one of three that uh, we want playing regular football week in week out and um, for him to be going and doing that now at uh, a club like Southampton who are in the Premier League you know um, they've kind of dilly dallied where they are in the league but I mean for him it's a perfect step you know, if he impresses there, there's no saying we can't go and, you know, reach someone like a Man City or someone like that down the line. So, in my opinion, it's a fantastic move. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is I'm going through, um, if you don't know Kenny's Kids on Twitter, you should follow Kenny's Kids on Twitter. So basically I'm going through, they have a, a Pundit Arena um, transfer centre with Kenny's Kids and it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm just going through it here with all it has all the latest done deals and I'll go through them. And also then it has all the latest rumours and it has links all to those um rumours and you know where they're coming from and all the sources. So absolutely fantastic um by Ronan Calvert who's doing it over at Kenny's Kids. So yeah, um I suppose it gives you guys a chance to come in and, and chat with me while I'm going through it as well. So it's a bit of a win win for everyone. Well, most people would say, but um yeah, come along, join us in the comments as we uh, we go through it. But uh, Gavin Bazunu to to Manchester or to from Manchester City to Southampton is an absolutely excellent um, move, and uh, I I I think everybody other than Portsmouth fans are quite happy with this move. So I think it makes sense for everybody involved, and uh, I look forward to seeing how he gets on, and I look forward to seeing him in the Premier League. Obviously, we've seen how talented he is um, in. Irish games and when we've seen him play and just some of the saves he made. I was lucky enough to see his debut where he was probably the loudest player on the pitch and I know, look, it was an empty stadium and stuff like that, but the fact is he was louder than some of the pros that were there and I've seen some of them pros over the years and Gavin Bazuna was ordering them around and stuff like that against Luxembourg, albeit we lost the game 1-0. He couldn't blame anything on him. Um, arguably he'd been faultless other than maybe the pass he gave to Hendrick, I think it was Hendrick, uh, to give away the penalty, and then he saved the penalty. So, in retrospect, he, he, he pretty much made up for any sort of error there. So I think Gavin Bazunu moving to Southampton, if I was to rate that transfer, I would give it a 10. Um, just because I said it makes sense to everybody involved. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm just trying to think of what other transfers. Uh, yeah, Carl Heffern into AC Milan. We obviously know, um, and if you're joining me, you can go in and click on the links as well. Um, well, obviously, you could do it after, but like um, his move to AC Milan, it's been confirmed. Um, he had a loan and he impressed, and we obviously seen the pictures of him with Paolo Maldini. Um, he left Cork in January and then he joined um, AC Milan on loan and now after basically impressing on the loan, they've exercised their right to sign him. So it's fantastic news. Um, obviously, we know a lot of our Irish players are moving to Syria. Uh, Festiel Bozzelli and um, Kevin Zeffi and there should be one more. I think uh, Idemo Amaku is linked with um, a move there to, uh, to Lecce. And, uh, oh yeah, of course, James Banqua to uh, Udinese as well. So uh, it seems to be a new home for a lot of Irish players, which is good to see. Um, a good move, another move that happened today that a lot of people would be happy about as well as Liam Scales gone on loan to a season-long loan deal to Aberdeen, which is, you know, good news because I think we've been wanting him to kind of go there and do well. We've had high ac expectations. He was brilliant to Chamber Grove, has really excelled there. And... Um, I look at him as a player who he needs a manager that really needs to love him. Um, I think Ange will love him in time, but I don't think he trusts him right now. So I think for him to go 
and play with Jim Goodwin at Aberdeen, I think it's fantastic because we know that Jim Goodwin's really good at nurturing Irish talent, especially in the SPFL. We think of Jamie McGrath and what a great job he did with him there, Conor Ronan as well. And he got the job from uh, from St. Mirren uh, to Aberdeen from what he did with a lot, largely with those players. So um, I'd expect a lot more Irish players to be heading towards Aberdeen. I think this is the first of a few, though. But just back to Cahill Heverton. I mean, he moved to Ace Milan for uh for an irish player it's a bit mad like you're seeing all the pages sharing like rising ballers even the bbc were sharing so it's big news for uh for an irish player like him to be moving across and obviously now his, his parents are, are you know famous runners as well so you know it kind of runs in the family so um he'd definitely be one to watch and it'd be interesting to see how he gets on over at east milan Um, another youngster who's made a big move as well is josh keely he's moved to uh to Spurs from St. Pat's um, really highly talented goalkeeper as well he's only 19 and um, you know it, it's still not officially announced but apparently it's going to be announced on the, the 1st of July according to Kenny's kids there so um, that's another big one he seems like a really highly rated goalkeeper um, one of the Irish um, underage players as well so I think this is a move that makes sense for everybody so um, yeah really happy with that one um, what other moves have we got Owen O'Connell has moved to Charlton from, um, I think it was Rochdale. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, haven't seen too much of him, but um, yeah, he's uh, he's from Cork as far as I know about him. But, uh, you know, he's a good good defender, but uh, I'd like to see him kick up the leagues a little bit more. Uh, Connor Carty has gone to Bolton from uh, Wolves as well. An excellent young player, an excellent young striker as well. I think um, this might just be the makings of him. He might not have been able to maybe um, force his way into the Wolves squad, but uh, I've seen him play a good few times at underage level, and he was obviously part of the under-17 Euros team as well. We did a little interview with him and, and kind of kept our eye on him since then. But, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, he's only a young fella. Um, if he can get into the squad... Uh, and start scoring some goals. Uh, he can make a fine career for himself, I think. Um, really good young player, and um, I look forward to seeing how he gets on as well. Um, you know, going to Bolton is a pretty big club if you're kind of going looking at the lower leagues. I know people said they won't, but um, if you can do well there and, and climb up the leagues, there's absolutely no reason why um, other teams won't be looking to snap him up. Then you know. Um, then other moves, Luke O'Connell has obviously gone to Barnes. He, hopefully he can kickstart his career again. We obviously know he struggled at Celtic, went to a couple of um, loan deals as well uh, from Celtic and just didn't really hit it off really that well. So, um, you know, it, it, this is probably a big chance for him now to kick on. He's back in England where he, you know, he grew up and stuff like that. He's obviously, I think he's from Liverpool, but he played for Bolton. They're not, they're not far away. Um, Barnsley as well Northern England he'll feel right at home there um, <clears throat> which is whether or not he can get into the team and impress from there um, Gavin Bazoon to Southampton we spoke about that one already uh, excellent signing and uh, really happy with that one Sean Williams to Gillingham that's another one that makes sense and that's probably from a coaching point of view that's probably going to help what, um, he was obviously with Portsmouth this season as well after coming off the back of uh, playing with Millwall so um yeah, uh, it's probably a good move for him, but uh, I don't think it's going to be a move that many people are going to keep be keeping eyes on. Same with Paddy O'Connor to Lincoln, uh, John O'Sullivan to Bowes is a good signing for Bowes. I think um, he'll bring a lot of steel to their team, which they've probably been lacking. Uh, Ryan Burke as well, good young left back, um, was with Birmingham as well. Uh, he is joined Bowes as well, so two good signing for Bowes this week. Um, or well, actually, it wasn't this week; it's been the last couple of weeks. Uh, but it's my first time doing this transfer video which I'm hoping to do as a weekly thing if you guys are going to join us in the comments and uh, as well as that don't forget to like in and don't forget to subscribe um, let's see how many subscribers we are away from the big 11,000 we're still waiting on people to come in um, still a few to go yeah then uh, we have Corey O'Keefe to Forest Green Callum O'Dowd to Carve, that's an interesting one. He really needs a move that can kickstart his career again, and I think that might be the right move. So it will be interesting to see how Callum gets on because uh, he just kind of stagnated a little bit at Bristol City. We know he's a good player, but he just doesn't seem to play enough, and he seems to get injured an awful lot. So hopefully this is a move where you know he can get in, 
he can make his impact, he can avoid injury and go on from there. Uh, Killian Kailos uh, to Cairns as well. Um, that's I don't know too much about him, um, but he's uh, a draw of the United teenager. Um, his name does look a bit French anyway, but uh, he's, it turns out he's from Mead. So uh, he's uh, draw his youngest ever senior player this season, playing in the Boynes Oilers uh, March encounter against Sligo Rovers, according to Kenny's kids. Um, sorry, he's not from Mead. That's me talking nonsense. Uh, in the meantime, talent forward has been heavily involved with the under 19 side, uh, the Ireland under 19 side. Um. So yeah, um, he's the youngest player to feature for the club in the League of Ireland, and uh, yeah, it doesn't say where he's from. But anyway, uh, he is the youngest player for Drogheda, and he has moved to Cannes or Can, if you want to call it S M Can C A E N, in France. I think they're a League Two side. Uh, Ocean McEntee has moved to Walsall. Um, he was obviously coming through. At Newcastle, and then Alex Murphy has gone from Galway to Newcastle. People knew about that one already. Uh, highly talented youngster as well. Uh, Dara O'Connor has gone to Greenock. Morton, uh, I think he was released by Motherwell. Uh, Alan Powers to Kilmarnock. Mark Sykes to Bristol City. That'd be interesting because he seems as though he's after taking Callum Robinson or Callum O'Dowd's place uh, at Bristol City. So that's interesting. Then you've Jordan Shipley to Shrewsbury, and you've got Jason Malumby to West Brom. So they're all the latest done deals, and that's on Kenny's Kids um, Transfer Centre on Pundit Arena, which was put together by Roman Calvert, uh, which is brilliant. So if you are looking for Irish players, uh, their transfers and everything like that, he is doing that over the course of the summer. So I will be using this as well as a reference point as well over the uh, the videos and stuff like that. So um Big shout out to Ronan for that. Uh, then the latest rumours, which are always good to talk about. Sam Curtis to Feyenoord. Sam Curtis, I think he was the youngest player to ever play for Pats at 14. I could be wrong on that one. But I'm going to just double check that one. I think he is. Uh, him and his brother Ben both play for St. Pats. And uh, yeah, he's just... The more I hear about me, I remember he played a game against Shells and arguably should have been sent off, people were saying. And they were saying if he wasn't so young, he probably wouldn't have been sent off. But I do think he's a fine young player. He kind of comes in the same group of players as the Kevin Zeffies and the Cahill Heffernans of this world. So uh, it seems as though he's in that bracket and, and a lot of clubs have been looking at him. I know he was on trials with other Serie A clubs as well. I think he was with Roma as well. So he's a really good player. Foreigner would are really interested in him. So it will be... Very, very interesting to see how he gets on, if he does even go there. And the latest stem with Robbie Brady is that uh, Andrew Dempsey is reporting that um, he's been linked with a host of championship clubs, but um, his current deal at Bournemouth is set to draw to a close, but uh, Brady's championship campaign with the Cherries was beset by injuries again. Uh, Scott Parker was forced to, do, to make without him for most of the season. So, uh, according to Team Talk, Middlesbrough, Huddersfield and Sunderland are all interested in uh, Robbie Brady. So, let's see how that plays out over the course of the summer. I'd be interested to see if he gets a move somewhere. I'd like to see him get a move somewhere because, obviously, I like Robbie Brady. I think everyone likes Robbie Brady and thinks he's a class player. Uh, the other interesting one that's kind of coming out at the moment is the Luke McNally one. The Luke McNally to Burnley one transfer. Um, that a lot of people are talking about at the moment. So, um, uh, what is it? Uh, let's see now. Um, so yeah, Burnley are looking to open the door for possible uh, Nathan Collins departure by securing the services of Luke McNally. Um, Luke obviously had a great season with uh, Oxford last year, and. Uh, Apparently, Burnley view him as a similar style of player to Nathan Collins, and if he goes through, he will be one of Vincent Company's first signings this season. He actually had an excellent uh, campaign last year, um, and he came from St. Pat's the season before last. I think in the summer, he moved. Um, so that will be interesting, but it obviously means that Nathan Collins will be on the move then if that is the case and that's the next room we'll come to that in a sec but he played uh, 30 times in League 1 last season scored 4 goals 
Um, it says the right footed defender is renowned for his strength and athleticism like Collins. It's his comfort in possession of the football that has made bigger names, uh, bigger name clubs pay attention. He was linked with Spurs last March after winning Oxford's Player of the Month prize, but it would appear that any interest from the North London side has cooled. So um, it looks as though Burnley are in for Luke McNally, and it looks as though Nathan Collins is on the way out. And Wolves and Newcastle are both two clubs that are looking at him. Um, but let me just see now. Uh, so according to Talksport, um, it seems as though Villa, Leeds, and Wolves are all eager to sign Nathan Collins. That's Talksport saying that. So it's usually Talksport, talk shy. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, I'll come to the comments shortly. Uh, if there's any idiotic comments, I'll just get rid. But hopefully, there's not. I'm not even looking at them at the minute. Uh, yeah, Wolves, I think would suit. Nathan Collins a lot and obviously the style of play but I think um, Villa could be good for him as well and playing under Steven Gerrard could be good um, so I wouldn't really I just wouldn't like to see him go to Leeds right now just because they're on that second or their, their third season sorry um, when last season went so to the wire for them I think they could struggle again next year but I think Wolves would be fine I think Villa would be fine and their moves where he can potentially make a step up again from there rather than going into another relegation scrap um, it depends on who they sign as well but I do believe Newcastle are in for him as well and with the money that they have he could be the next component to help them reach the next level maybe um, but that's what they're saying anyway uh, then uh, there's a couple of other ones Troy Parrott to, to Swansea seems to be one that's really starting to take a bit of um, notice about and obviously we know he linked up well with Michael Obafemi in the recent Ireland game against Scotland so that would be interesting if he gets in there uh, to Swansea and see how he got on imagine those two linking up for club and country that could be really good for Ireland but then there's talk of him going to Brighton as in Michael Obafemi so yeah uh, some interesting news it's great to have a bit of news about our own players rather than just kind of going oh well someone might move we actually have a bit of hype and a bit of you know there's a bit of interest to this transfer window already from an Irish point of view and uh, yeah Troy Parr to Swansea that could be interesting I'll be keeping an eye on that one uh, Will Smallbone to Nottingham Forest mm, I don't know where that kind of link has come from I'm going to go into it anyway and just let talk to you about it uh it says, uh, I don't know where, the small bone, um, it doesn't really say, it just says, uh, they'll be likely to be in a relegation battle, he's far more likely to be playing in Nottingham, and at 22 years of age, the most important thing on his agenda, um, but it doesn't really say, uh, they said they're leading the race to sign small bone fresh off the back of promotion to the Premier League, but that's all it really says, there's no heavy, um, interest there it just says that they're kind of the firm favourites to sign him if anyone's to sign him uh, Darrell Lenehan to West Brom obviously we saw how good Darrell Lenehan could be after, against um, Ukraine and I think he got into the player uh, the, the EFL team of the season as well so I think this is a fella who is ready really to make the next step in his career and if he went to West Brom and he'd be there partnering Darrell O'Shea in, in centre back and he'd have Jason Malumby and Callum Robinson all at the same club with him I think that could be interesting for Ireland because you have the four of them you know you remember when the Preston lads used to play uh, together at Ireland um, and they used to always be inseparable I think that could be the case if uh, West Brom do that as well and I think it could be really good for Darrell O'Shea but I could think it would do no harm for his uh, international chances as well if he went there but I think if he really wanted to kick on and be number one he should probably look at I think a Premier League club but I mean it's easy me saying that and if clubs are coming in for you and clubs aren't coming in for you then it's difficult Um. Yeah, I see some comments coming in there now. So keep them comments coming in, lads. Good lads. I'll come to them very shortly. Uh, I'm just running through the last couple of rumours here. And then I'll go through the comments, what you, you guys are saying as well. So Shane Long to Reading, back to where it all kind of started from, from, you know, English football point of view. He moved over from Cork. They originally were looking at Kevin Doyle. Fairy tale stuff, really. And he, he, they looked at him and thought he was very raw, and he came into the team and done really well for them. And uh, you know, he's gone down to probably be one of the best Irish players to come across to England in uh, recent times, I think. Anyway, and uh, for what he's achieved, he's been an excellent servant, and uh, still playing in the Premier League. Obviously, that 
if that Reading thing comes to a close, then that won't be the case. Cyrus Christie to Fenerbahce is an interesting one. I wonder where, like, Fulham saying, we have him for sale, and then everyone came onto the comments and started going, come to Fenerbahce, the way they always say, come to Besiktas. But uh, we know that uh, Cyrus was saying that uh, he is looking at a move, and he is looking at a move abroad. So I think a move to Fenerbahce actually could be, could be interesting, because I was in the press conference when he said that, and uh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad move for him if he does go. I mean, he'd be playing European football. Likely, um, he'd probably start for them. Yeah, I think I think that's a move that can that could work for everybody really. And what else? Um, what else have we got in the transfer window? The rumors we've got. Michael Alba, Femi to Brighton. I just mentioned that one earlier, but it seems as though Talk Sport are talking about this one as well. Um, but they're linking Alba Femi. It says Seagulls swoop for Alba Femi? Question mark. Brighton are one of a number of clubs showing interest in stri- uh, Swansea striker Michael Alba Femi. The Re- excuse me, the Republic of Ireland uh, international Alba Femi, twenty one, ended the season in sensational form, scoring ten goals in his last seventeen games. Uh, losing Alba Femi would be a blow for the Swans with fellow frontman Joel Perrault snubbing talks over a new contract I think Swansea might be having trouble financially because I think that's why they didn't sign Cyrus um, I think that, uh, he was saying that cutbacks or something like that I think that the, the club are trying to budget better um, and that's why they didn't sign Cyrus so that could be an issue with Michael Alba Femi and they might be looking to cash in but I could be wrong on that stuff. There's any Swansea fans out there, you can let me know. Idemo Maku, obviously Sean McRover's youngster, is linked with a move to Serie A side Lecce. And uh, apparently they're showing strong interest. There's again another article on uh, Pundit Arena, this time by Rudy Kinsler. And it says he's only 18. He's obviously impressed for Sean McRover. And uh, while, while lim- uh, opportunities have been limited... Um, He's impressed when he's been on the pitch. So, according to journalist Neil O'Reardon, Roma and Celtic have also been keeping tabs on Amaku, who burst onto the scene almost a year ago by scoring a last-minute winner against Tuta in the Euro- Europa Conference League. And I was at that game, I think. Pretty sure I was. But, uh, burst onto the scene. We all know where that line came from. But, um, now look, if he went, that's another player that's linked with a move to Syria, And if he used to go there... That could be interesting, but uh, I hope it's the case if he's actually going there and he's going to be on the brink of getting into the first team rather than just going over and being thrown into a, a young side because he could just do that at Chamber Grovers. I think he will start getting game time soon. I think Stephen Baddy's going to start trusting him soon as well. Nathan Collins is linked with a move to Newcastle as well this time. And uh, that's, uh, I know we spoke to him about him there, sorry, uh, going to Wolves and going to... Uh, Leeds and Aston Villa but uh, according to journalist Peter O'Rourke uh, Newcastle and Leeds are iron moves for Burnley's defender Nathan Collins and we know if that move is to go through Luke McNally will be going to Burnley from Oxford as well so it could be an interesting Irish uh, twist of fate there um, then another actually quite good one as well is Will Keane to Club Bruges and um, a couple of papers are 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 quoting that one and we've heard this one for a while that uh, you know he's in uh, Will Keane he's at the centre of a three way transfer battle from Watford QPR and Sheffield United but I think Club Bruges are in for him as well that's just in the in the English league but uh, he's also attracted uh, interest from Belgian outfit Club Bruges uh, he's 29 and he scored 27 times in all competitions and he won Wigan's players player of the season for a standout performance last year so uh, if he could go to Club Rouge and do well, then he might start staking a claim in the Irish team because so far he's looked out of his depth in international football. But I would give him the benefit of the doubt. Aidan McGeady is linked with a move to Hibs. So uh, at the moment he's linked with a return to Scotland when his deal with newly promoted Sunderland is expired at the end of June. So uh, I'd imagine he'd be on the move in July. But uh, sorry, all these stupid ads are playing. Uh, but yeah, um, according to a few reports, uh, he's linked with a move to, to Hibs. So I wonder if he'd go there and if he did. I mean, we're not going to be lighting up any trees now with Aidan McGeady, but it'd be nice for him to wind down his career in Scotland 
uh, and where, where it all started from so I wish him all the best if he does go there a uh, couple the last couple just coming in there um Gavin Kilkenny to Middlesbrough that could be an interesting one I'd like to see Gavin Kilkenny really kick on this year and get a go to a club that really trusts him and really gets the best out of him I think Chris Wilder could be that type of player who or that type of manager sorry who gets the best out of a player like him so I think next season is a big season for Kenny and I think if he has a good season he could likely get into our senior squad he just needs to play more senior games to be trusted I think at senior level same with Will Smallbone really between the two of them um, I think you'll start seeing them another uh, player linked with a move to Swansea is Chiodosi Ogbeni and he's been linked with them again on Pundit Arena they're linking them and they're just saying that the the Wales online are reporting on Monday that uh, he uh, he's earned himself the interest of Swansea City probably off the back of a really good season with Rotherham and a really good season with Ireland really I think he's going to be uh, really you know hot property this summer and I think uh, he could go on sign for Swansea and maybe help him get up so if they did get him, I reckon they wouldn't have to pay that much for him. And he could be a really good signing if they do get him. Uh, the last one then is just Jack Taylor from Peterborough. Is look, um, he, he could be on his way to Ipswich Town. And it'd be interesting to see if he goes there. But it's saying there that it was rumoured that uh, Taylor would attract championship interest and therefore remain in England second tier next season. But the box boxer is ready, ready, well regarded as he is key to Peter's, Peterborough's original promotion in the year before and it was rep- represented Ireland at under 21 level and Stephen Kenny I think has called him up as well into the squad but uh, it looks as though um, Kieran McKenna the former Manchester United assistant is looking at um, signing him so yeah that's another player who you'd keep your eye on as well so that's it in terms of the transfer news and rumors so i'm going to get your comments up now and i'll run through them and if there's anything else this is a good few comments there um just let me move this out the way so those are good irish keepers alex moody for let me just see that. Uh, I uh, getting moved soon. Please God, I haven't seen Alex Moody, but uh, I'll keep an eye out for him now that you've mentioned him. Um, but yeah, uh, Daratoy, uh, what club was he at before AC Milan? What position does he play? Yeah, he's a centre mid, but I think he could play centre back as well. The Milan might be looking at him as a centre back because of the height of him. I don't know, but uh, yeah, he. Uh, he moved from Cork City. I think he played one or two games for Cork City in the League of Ireland and then headed off. Um, John Muckian says, Justin Ferris, I did get half the publicity and he moved to Inter a long time ago now. Um, I think it was Kevin, uh, you corrected yourself uh, underneath there, Al- Zeffi, although Ferris, I may wake his way into the Rovers first team soon. Yeah, the bulk of players. Yeah, we'll see. I think uh, he's a, he's obviously a good player, but... Uh, it is what it is um, I think Farazai for some reason he just hasn't got the move or maybe he's delaying on the move because I know he's been at serious clubs and he's been at serious trials as well uh, Kenny loves out doubt it yes he does but he doesn't play so if you're not playing you can't be played at an international level either um, Burnley look for 30 million for Nathan Collins Villa would be a good spot for him yeah I agree I think if he did go uh I think he could be someone that someone like Steven Gerrard would absolutely love because of the way he plays and uh, the way he leads. And at such a young age, he's just got such a big future that I think 30 million would be a bargain for him right now. Uh, Ryan Dunn says, anything about Joe Redmond to Oxford? I haven't seen anything yet, but um, it's only half eight on a Tuesday. So maybe that one uh, might come around over the next day or two I don't know if you've heard something but uh, I actually saw him today down in Dunleary funny enough so he's still in Ireland if that's any good to you uh, John Wilkins says a nice draw for the under 21s yeah but like I never kind of celebrate those things like with the under 21s because I don't know what the Israel under 21s are like 
in comparison to us. So they could they be strong, could they not be strong? Who knows? So uh look, let's just worry about that when it comes around, but it's better than getting a, a, a France or an Italy or whatever. I know they probably weren't in the draw, but you know what I mean. Um and Dara Burns to Hibs. I haven't heard anything about Dara moving to Hibs in a while. That obviously the rumour was uh, around last summer. Uh, Paul, do you think GP Productions podcast says, Paul, do you think Kelleher should go out on loan? I do. I do. I think you should be looking at what Bazuna did last year. And look, the only reason he was in ahead of Bazuna is because Bazuna was sick and injured. Otherwise, I think Bazuna would be in there and people would be doing well to pull him out of goal. I think you look at what Bazuna's done. He's gone out. He wanted to get first team football. You know, Manchester City wanted him to, to stay there. And he said, I'm not staying. I want to go and pursue first team football. And you're not going to give it to me here. So I'm going to get out. I think Kelleher should do the same now. He's 23. He's not 18 or 19. He's 23. So he needs to get himself to a club where he's the number one. And he's trusted. And uh, people people like him and stuff like that. Uh, Dara agrees that he should go out alone. And then John Muckian says night to uh, to Everton to link back up with Lampard. I'd take him all day long. I've said that numerous times that I'd take him all day long. But it's up to Frank Lampard, not me, uh, how that goes. But yeah, as you know, um, look, it'll be interesting to see how it goes and how we... However, an approach to transfers because it looks like they're looking at players like Harry Winks and they're looking at players like uh, Zinchenko and stuff like that. So if they're going for them, I don't see how Knight gets in the team. So I don't think he'll be coming to Everton as much as I'd love him to. I'd almost prefer Nathan Collins though. But yeah. Anyway, that's been the transfer talk. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Should I make this a regular feature every Tuesday or should I do it Tuesday and Thursday? Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to like the video it helps the channel grow and it shows it to more people i'm sure you want to show it to more people all you gotta do is like it i'm not even asking you to share it i'm only asking you to like it so please like and subscribe and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments please and i'll speak to you all